sorry I didn't have one uh, when I was growing up. But if you have a pet, touch them a lot. Okay. Well, I am uh, happy to be back. I was here, I think it was about a month ago, and I did, I taught you four different stress reduction techniques, which I hope some of you have done some of. Um, you know, they were very different kinds of things because you know the expression, different strokes for different folks. Uh, what one person loves, somebody else may really despise. So what I'm going to do today is four more things that are very good for stress reduction, and they're quite different. Um, I've sent the handouts in to Janet, so she'll be able to get them to you. If you, uh, she's, you're doing the finger hand one in bed, that's great. That's the tracing hands with fingers, with the breath, do you remember that? That's one of the most relaxing things for every age person. And we're not gonna repeat that today, but it's in, it's in the last um, group of uh, techniques. Okay, so what I would like to, us to start with today is the breath. Breath is all around the world. People have realized when you are in pain, when you're angry, when you're frightened, when you're confused, um, nervous, anxious, your breath will get shallow and more rapid. And all, people all around the world have also noticed if you take control of your breath and voluntarily slow it down by a whole host of different techniques, within as little as two minutes, your body relaxes and your mind relaxes. So breath control, you know, I run a clinic with, for kids with chronic pain and uh, I teach them all several breath techniques. So what we're going to do today is the one that's done naturally by infants and babies, which is abdominal or diaphragmatic breathing. You're all familiar with it, but we're going to do it in a regular way. So uh, this can be done sitting or standing or lying down. Uh, I assume that most of you are sitting, but it, it really doesn't matter. It's hardest to do when you're standing up, but it can be done. And uh, what we do is this, you, you inhale slowly. Let me explain it first, then we'll do it. You inhale slowly, and as you inhale, you expand and push your abdomen out. Um, what I tell a lot of the younger children is if they have a a rubber ducky or a stuffed animal, they can do this half reclining or lying down, put the animal on their tummy and make it move up and down with the breath. So if you have one, you can do it too. Okay, so you inhale, expand and push your abdomen out. Then without pausing, you exhale, drop your shoulders and pull your abdomen in. Allow it to contract. It may contract by itself, but if not, then you actually have to pull it in. And what we're going, your breath may naturally slow down when you do this. So it doesn't really matter how fast you do it, but try to have the count fairly even when you're inhaling and when you're exhaling. And then if you wanna wait in between breaths, that's okay. But the actual count, many people do it to a count of let's say four, uh, into the count of four, out to the counter for you. Breathe through your nose, unless your nose is all stuffed, and don't hold your breath. Okay, so let's, just for the first time, let's blow out the stale air through our mouths, but the whole rest of the practice is going to be um, through the nose. And what I'm going to do is, let me set my uh, alarm on my phone for two minutes, so I, I won't have to look at the watch. It'll just go off. Okay. All right. So we're first going to blow out the stale air through the mouth and then through the nose. We'll be inhaling slowly, but, but an even count, pushing your stomach out. And then and without waiting, exhale slowly, pull your stomach in and drop your shoulders. The dropping the shoulders is very important part of relaxing. Okay. So get ready. Let's go and just do it at your own rate. I'll tell you when the two minutes are up. And you only have to blow out through your mouth just the first time.
Okay. Just sit quietly. Okay, now become aware of yourself sitting in the chair or bed or floor. Feel your feet. You might want to wiggle your fingers and toes a little bit. Take a big breath and as you breathe out, become fully aware and alert right here, right now. Okay. Now in general, any time that you do a, whether it's a breathing practice or any other kind of practice or meditation, when you finish, it's a very good idea to sit quietly for at least a minute. If you shouldn't just leap up and run and do your next thing. It's very jarring because you have activated your parasympathetic system, which is the relaxing part of your nervous system. And if you jump up right away, unless there's an emergency, uh, it can really make you very jangled and anxious again. So uh, sit quietly. Uh, if anybody would like to share about what that felt like, how does it feel? That was two minutes. Did it feel like two minutes, longer, shorter? Do you feel any different now than you did before? You can just, I guess, mute, unmute yourself and talk. I don't know how you, how Janet usually runs this. Well, two minutes, I didn't realize how long two minutes are because I normally go to bed like that breathing and I think it takes me five minutes. Apparently I would fall asleep on the second one. Yeah. yeah. Well, your perception of time varies partly depending on how tired you are and also what's going on. That is, if you're frightened and nervous, it's not going to be the same as if you're lying in bed, relaxed, ready to go to sleep. But uh, you, there's also some evidence that, that subjectively, as people get older, the perception of time, it's like it appears to go much faster. If you think back when you were a child, in the summer when you had vacation from school, the days would last forever. It was wonderful. Now, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm at a place where each day is very full, but then at the end when I'm getting ready for bed and I have my dental floss and I say, I just did this, where did the day go? You know. <laughs> so uh, I think it's a general perception for many people that Time seems to go faster the older you get. But in any case, if you're enjoying what you're doing, the time um, may last, appear to last longer. Remember Albert Einstein said, when you're talking to a pretty girl, the two minutes seems like an hour. And when you're sitting on a hot stove, an hour, two minutes seems like an hour. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I said it backwards. When you're talking to a pretty girl, the, I, an hour seems like two minutes, and if you're sitting on a hot stove, two minutes seems like an hour. So time is not uh, an absolute, it's relative. Anyway, so um, I would suggest if you like this practice and you want to do it, uh, yes, you can do it with an animal, a live cat, for example, stretched across your tummy, or a stuffed animal, uh, or just plain. Um, but I would say do it for about two minutes. You don't have to set a timer, but just, uh, you know, if you do three breaths, it's not going to give you the, the relaxation. Uh, and you can do it, of course, as long as you'd like, even if you fall asleep. Because if you fall asleep, then it means you needed the nap. Okay, anybody else want to share before we go on? Okay. The next thing I'd like to show you, I'm gonna take my glasses off. This was taught to me many years ago by Dr. David Eisenberg, who was who's a very good friend. He was the first American medical student to study in China. And he studied with Chinese healers when he was a student and he's a little younger than I am. Um, the, the healer who taught him this actually was blind. It doesn't matter. The blind has nothing to do with it. But this is a very simple way to relieve headaches by just using your hands. It takes about two minutes and it's a wonderful uh, technique, which you can't use when you're driving because you need your hands for that. But any other time you can do it. 
uh, if you're having a headache at the time that you are doing it, your muscles may be a little tender. And we do ask you to push hard when you're pressing on the areas that will go over with you. If you're not having a headache, then it won't hurt. But if you, even if you are, once you stop the pressure, when you relax and take your hands away, that's when the scalp muscles relax and that's when the headache diminishes. And uh, it's amazing how efficient it is at doing that. Uh, I remember one lady who was the parent of a child I was teaching this to, when they came back for their follow-up visit, the mother said that it had taken away her headache instantly while we were doing it in the office. And she loved it so much that she practiced it and told it to all of her friends. So it was like a ripple effect of people learning how to do this. Okay, all you need are your hands. So take your index finger and third finger on both hands and put them at the bridge of your nose, right? What we're going to do is, is follow your eyebrows, pressing pretty hard at slowly. And then when you get to your temples, you're going to flip up like wings. There happens to be in this temporalis muscle over here, there's a trigger point that many people have that gives them muscle spasm. And so even if you're not having a headache, when you touch over here, it may be a little tender. Okay, we're gonna do this three times slowly. Start over here, go right over your eyebrow hair. Push pretty hard. And when you get to your temples, flip up like wings. Okay, now do it again. Flip up. A total of three times. And when you're done, put your hands in your lap and just sit quietly. Okay, that's that's section number one. May or may not feel different. It, the truth is, it doesn't matter. It's at the end of the practice that you that you hope that your uh, that your head feels better if you're having any. Okay, the second part, you start at the same place, right at the bridge of your nose, at the eyebrow level, and what we're going to do is vertically press hard across your frontalis muscle into your scalp, into the hair, up to the center of your head. And you push pretty hard. And we do that three times. So here you're crossing the frontalis muscle. And when you take your hands away, that helps it relax. Okay, into the top of your head, three times. And one more time. Now, if you happen to have a sinus infection or a cold, the maxil the uh, frontal sinuses are right here where you'd be pushing. So sometimes people will say it, it hurts a little bit when they go over, across this area. Okay, that's the second part. Just sit for a minute. And the third part is if you have if you're having a headache or you have a tender spot that you know, put your fingers at that spot. If you don't have it, then let's do it over here at the temples. But if you have a place that's sore or that often is sore, um, put your hand and you're going to turn without lifting your hands. You're going to circle, put the ha your hands pressing hard in a circle. Doesn't matter which direction you go but you do that about 20 times. And when you're done, put your hands in your lap and just sit quietly. Okay. Let me put my glasses on so I can see again. Okay. okay, now tune in to how your head and scalp feel and your neck. They may feel different, they may not. And, and the truth is, it doesn't matter. But if you 
if you do any of these practices when you're feeling good, then when you need them for a problem, you get into the relaxed place faster. And many people tell me they get tension headaches when they're stressed. Um, this, this week has been a particularly bad one and it's not even over yet. But um, this is a practice you can do as often as you want to. There's no side effects. And as I said, you can't do it when you're driving, but any other time, if you finish it and it feels a little teeny bit better, you can just do it again, do it again. All right. Would anybody like to share how that felt? No pressure, I never call on anybody. I have a question. Yes. Does the technique have any preventive effects? I mean, just, you know, if you don't really have headaches or anything. No, it won't prevent you from, no. It won't prevent you from having future headaches, but what it does do is to relax the scalp muscles. And so and it, you may, I mean, you, I guess you could say, maybe I would have had a headache and I didn't get one, but there's no way to know that. But it does relax your muscles. And but so it does you won't that. Have, yeah, okay. if you're having a headache when you do it, then it often relieves the pain. Oh, I Whether it will actually prevent another one, I don't know. But, but relaxing your muscles is a way to prevent them from getting spazzed. And you know you get sensitive to what the band feels like when you have a tension headache. As soon as you feel that coming on, if you're able to just do this, it really it works instantly. All right, thank you. Yeah, I just want to I want to say that I've loved my temples before without knowing what I was doing, and it always feels much better. Just you know, just rubbing your temples. Uh huh. Yes, well, that's exercise. That's often because well, the muscle, the scalp muscles are big muscles, and I'm sorry, I lost. I'm sorry. they are, and they they very easily get tight, and that's what gives you a headache. Yes. Yes. But as I mentioned, there's this point right over here. If you feel around in in your temple, you may find a little spot that's maybe the size oh. of a fingertip that's tender compared to yes. what's right around it. Yes, and, and so that's like a. a a very sensitive spot. If you massage that, even if it's not hurting, it will relax. And if it is hurting, then it'll relax. Yes, I agree. Thank you. Uh, head massage is one of the most relaxing. If you, if any of you get massages, you, either by a relative, a friend, or uh, professionally, head massages are fabulous. They really, uh, if you had to pick one part of the body, no, I think there's two parts of the body. If you had to pick, if somebody was, was tense, one of them would be your head and neck, and the second part would be your feet and the ankles down. Most relaxing. One of the problems with COVID is I, I, had, I was getting a massage every two weeks, and I'm, I'm in the high-risk group, and I won't let her come in because she's got clients and patients all week long. Who knows what exposure they'd be. So, so my husband does my feet. <laughs> He's very kind. I do my head myself. <laughs> Is this is this taught is this taught to uh, migraine sufferers? It's taught to anybody. It's useful for anybody. There are no side effects, no harmful side effects. Migraine headaches may not have a major component on the scalp. But sometimes they do. Migraine headaches are intracranial, but if you have a, in, an intracranial headache and you massage this and it makes it feel relaxed and good, it may help the migraine. No guarantee, but it may. It may. If, if I can go back with something you just said, I have an appointment with Dr. Kogan next week in person just to check up. Mm -hmm. Should I be afraid of going into GW? No. Wear a mask. Well, of course. And, you know, keep away from other people. Um, you either take some hand sanitizer with you or wash your hands, you know, right away. No, you don't have to be afraid. You just have to be careful. Oh, I'm always careful. I, yeah. I try to always be careful. Yeah, and the people, the practitioners are being extremely careful. You know, they're, they're disinfecting everything in an office in between uses. Okay. Um, and ma many, I don't know what his office is like, but, you know, many people are taking t temperature before they let a patient in the door. And they'll have, they'll ask them a few screening questions uh, about if they've had symptoms. And if they and if they have, they may not let them in the office. So you have to be honest. Sorry. I mean, it's it's a little scary. My daughter is a pediatrician here in Denver, 
she saw a child, a teenager, four days ago, who had a previous appointment for a checkup of acne, and the girl came to the appointment. The nurse took her temperature, which was normal, asked her the screening questions. She said no to all of it. Then she came in to see my daughter, who was luckily was wearing the mask and goggles. That's the that's what they do for every patient. Yeah. Um, and then you know, Allison was asking her about the acne and the medication. And the girl said, you know, by the way, I've had a little cough and I haven't been feeling so good the last oh few God. days. <laughs> oh, no. So she ran out, put on a gown and a head face shield, swabbed the kid's nose. It was positive. Oh, my it was word. positive the next day. So here is, here, here is frightening. <laughs> well, you don't, you can't control it. Most people, I think, would not be stupid like that. I mean, this was a teenage girl who probably didn't understand but you you have to be yeah. you have to be the cautious one. Absolutely. But don't be paranoid about it. If you need to go to the doctor, go. They will be from their end. They'll be keeping things very clean. And from your end, um, I will you know, wear a good mask. A good mask. <laughs> um, goggles. I don't know. If you have glasses, that's fine. If you have a face shield, you can wear that too. You don't that's have. That's a good to. idea. Okay, you thank you. To. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's just, very important just to, you know, wash your hands. If you go to the bathroom in the doctor's office, uh, as you leave, wash your hands for happy birthday twice, you know, the 20 seconds. And, oh, you, been, and then I'm take a paper it. towel, <laughs> take a paper towel and open the door to the bathroom, not with your skin after you've washed your hands. Use a paper towel to open the door. Oh, I'm obsessive compulsive about all of it. So I'll be doing that anyway. But I just wondered, yeah, no. you were talking about the... The foot therapy, I'm just, all of it's, you know, you just have to be very, 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 very careful. Thank you. You have to be careful, but not crazy. That's okay, crazy. thank you. Okay. All right, ready to go on? All right. Uh, let's see, we have 12 minutes. Okay. This one is really nice. Uh, I like this, and I teach it to the kids, and this is good if you're stressed in any way. You can do it in bed if you need to, you know, need to relax to go to sleep. You can do it uh, sitting, lying down, uh, lying down on your back, not lying on your stomach. Um, you can't really do this standing up. And you have to make sure you won't be disturbed for at least five minutes. Uh, if you have a cell phone, put it on vibrate and close your eyes. So what we're gonna do with this, this is called progressive relaxation with breath. We're going to start with our feet, tighten and relax, tighten and relax the muscles. And I will guide you through this as we breathe in and out. And when you finish, your body is really very relaxed and flopped. Okay, so sit down comfortably. Put your feet both on, on both of your feet on the floor, unless you're on a couch. Or if you have an ottoman, you could lift your feet. Close your eyes. If that's not comfortable for you, then soften your glance and stare at something a few feet away from you so your eyes are not, not running around, just staying in one spot. Now put your attention on your foot muscles and inside your shoes would be okay. Tighten them as you breathe in to the count of four. In, two, three, four, and notice how that feels. And now breathe out to the count of four and relax your foot muscles and notice the difference. Out, two, three. Now focus on your calves between the ankles and knees. Tighten your calf muscles as you breathe in to the count of four. Notice how it feels. And exhale to the count of four. Relax your calves. And notice the difference. Now put your attention on your thighs. Tighten your thighs and breathe in, two, three, four, and relax them out, two, three, four. Your legs may feel heavy when they relax, that's fine. Now very gently tighten up your abdomen, your stomach muscles, in, two, three, four, and out. Soften them up, two, three, four. Now tighten up your butt muscles. The children usually start laughing at this one. Squeeze your buttocks, count to four, in, two, three, four, 
and relax. Two, three, four. Now your body from the waist down should be relaxed or more relaxed than it was before. Okay, now we're moving on up. Tighten up your chest muscles. Breathe in, two, three, four, and out. Relax them, two, three, four. Make a fist with both hands and count to four as you squeeze tight. Now relax, two, three, four. And mentally check out your fingers, the palms of your hands and the backs to make sure they're relaxed. Now we'll move up to the arms. Tighten up your arm muscles in, two, three, four, and out. Relax them, two, three, four. Your arms may feel heavy when they relax, that's fine. Now tighten up your shoulders. It's a place where many people have tension. In, two, three, four, and drop your shoulders. Out, three, four. Now tighten up your back, especially the muscles near your spine. Three, four, and relax. Two, three, four. Sometimes your body wants to flop forwards or sideways. That's okay. Okay, now scrunch up your face. Two, three, four, and relax your face. Two, three, Four, and mentally check out around your mouth. If it wants to hang open, that's okay. The area around your eyes, check your cheeks, your chin and your forehead. Make sure your face muscles are soft and relaxed. Now tighten up your scalp as if you're wearing a hat that was too tight. Breathe in, two, three, four, and relax, two, three, Four. And finally, your neck. That's another place where many people carry tension. Tighten your neck. In, two, three, four, and out. If your neck flops, that's okay. Three, four. Now quickly, put your attention on the top of your head and quickly scan your body from the top down to your toes. If there is a place that's not relaxed and comfortable, then quickly relax it and re Relax, you tighten it and relax it. So when you're done, your whole body should be relaxed and comfortable. And do that now. Just spend a few seconds scanning your body. Okay. And now while relaxed, let's do three breaths to the count of four in and four out. Don't move, just lie there or sit there. Breathe three times, four in, four out. And drop your shoulders if they're not already relaxed. Okay, now open your eyes and just sit there. Wiggle your fingers and toes. And now if you, need, if you needed to get up, you could. But again, give yourself a, about a minute before you leap up. Somebody put something on chat that, that had trouble tightening, keeping the body tight. It's not four breaths, it's the count of four. It's one breath in. So let's just try, stiffen your entire body, everybody, and breathe in, two, three, four, and breathe out and flop, two, three, four. I think most people can do that. If you're, maybe if you're counting too slowly and you're like getting short of breath, that might be a problem. You could try counting, making your counts a little faster so that you can keep whatever muscle you're tightening for the count of four. Okay, anybody like to share? This one is nice to do when you're in bed, um, but
But you, if you do it, you have to lie down on your back. And if that's not a comfortable way for you to, to go to sleep, then, uh, then do it. Okay. And now the last thing in our last couple of minutes, I'll tell you this and we won't, we may not have time to do the whole thing. And you may be familiar with it already. The three good things recall, do you know that? Have you done that yet? At the end of the day, it's important to have gratitude in your day. At the end, this is good to do at the end of the day, even if it's been a bad day. You sit down and you think of three good things, three positive things that happened that day and why they were positive. They don't have to be very important, but for example, people, an interaction with a person, um, your attitude about something, you felt good about something, unexpected good news, finishing a job, feeling a connection with a higher power, uh, heard a funny joke, it, you know, it doesn't really matter, but try to find three things and why they look good. Now, even if you had a very bad, stressful day, which some of us do, you can always find a couple of things. It was sunny today, or we don't live in a war-torn country like Yemen, or I woke up today. What's the alternative? There's always something that you can find. So right now in the last couple of minutes, just try to think of one, one good thing that happened to you in the last 24 hours. It could have been today or yesterday. You don't have to say it, just think it and why it was a positive thing. And try to smile if you can. You know, there have been studies that show if you make the, if you smile, even if you're not feeling that way, it relaxes you and changes your brain waves to a more relaxed pattern. So that is fake it till you make it. Isn't that the expression? Make you smile, even if you're feeling crummy. Yeah, ha ha ha. It does. You remember, do you remember this little happy tune from the That's King right. That's right, king and all, yeah. Okay, any any last minute things? Because I see you're almost out of time. Okay, if you want the material, um, Janet has it available for you. Uh, please try to, if you know, try to do these things when you're feeling good. Then you get familiar with it, and then when something bad happens, you can just start it, and you get you really do get into that good place better. Uh, okay. I have one thing I want to share about the from the first presenter. Um, the Washington Times has an article that came out recently called "The Awe Walk." W, I mean A W E. -E. Yes. Yeah. Did you read that also? That was no, a very but, good article. No, but it's a, talked, yeah, it's they, it talked about walking, but noticing trees and nature and that kind of thing, and how impactful that has on. The, the same subject that the first presenter was yeah, talking thank about. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I found that in, I think it was the Greater Good Science Center, which is a, it's at Berkeley, UC Berkeley. They have a wonderful group. If you're interested, it's free to just join up. Um, the All Walk, yes. And it's also a mindfulness practice because you're paying attention as you're walking to uh, anything that's nice in nature. 